Let's play the shaker. You want a variety of sizes and types of shakers in your band room, small, medium, and large to cover all the styles. Shaker's one of the few instruments where we're actually playing the air. We're not striking another instrument, so it can be challenging. If you're playing a cha-cha, for example, a slow eighth note pattern, which we'll start with, you may want to use your elbow to help control the shaker. If you're speeding up to a 16th note pattern, here's something you can practice first. You can play eighth notes on your hand, one and two and three and four and, but when I come away from my hand, I'm getting an extra sound, so I'll actually produce 16th notes when I play eighth notes against my hand. Let's listen. We'll move on to the egg shaker next. Egg shakers can have handles or not. To make a really soft sound on the egg shaker, grip your hand all the way around it and you'll produce a really soft dampened sound. Pretty cool. Next, I'm going to play a more open sound on the shaker. Then I'm going to mix it up with open close, just like we did on the triangle. Accents on the shaker can be a little tricky. I usually put the accented note at the top of my shaker pattern and the unaccented note at the bottom. For example, here's a pattern with accents on the downbeats. And now on the upbeats on the ands of the beat. We also want to make sure that we have a large shaker to play sparingly. Use this in large ensemble or very forte situations. And we're not going to use this big guy for everything. Here's the loud shaker. Two hand technique. That's the shaker. The cowbell. The cowbell can be a whole lot of fun to play. You've got to make sure though and still put the special considerations that you have with all of the other accessory percussion instruments into playing great cowbell. You need good sounding cowbells in a variety of sizes. Here I've got a small cowbell and a larger cowbell. We're going to use these in a variety of styles and we can play them in a variety of ways. Let's start with some sticks. I play the high bell, two sticks, and the low bell. I'm playing on the bell or the edge of the cowbell itself. If I go up back towards the end of it, I get a much drier sound. You don't always want to play the cowbell with sticks. Let's try it with a multi mallet. The smaller the bell, the smaller the implement needs to be. Sometimes you want to dampen sound on the cowbell. I'll first dampen with my hand. If I need to use two hands, I can take a little piece of duct tape, like I have here, and a felt. You can also put a small towel or a piece of foam up inside the bell portion. I'm going to tape it on, wrap it around, and use the felt to dampen the bell. Now listen how dry the sound is. We can also hold the cowbell in our hand. If you've got these pieces on the bell, you can take them off. If you leave them on, make sure they're tight so they don't rattle. Hold the bell in your hand. The other hand, like playing crash cymbals, affects 
the dampening on the cowbell. So if you want a really dry sound, put your hand all the way around it and grip tightly. If you want a more resonant sound, hold it loosely. More cowbell. Next is the clave. There are basically two different types of clave. There's synthetic clave and wooden clave. I recommend using the synthetic type for more outdoor play. They're very loud. And you can use the wooden type for indoor play. Clave are used in predominantly Latin music, but not just Latin music. A 3-2 clave pattern or 2-3 clave pattern is definitely going to show up at some time in your band music. Holding the clave are pretty important. We want to pick them up and just grab onto them. And you can play them like that with a dampened sound, gripping them like drumsticks. For maximum resonance, do this. Make a cradle with your non-dominant hand, so you're not really holding on to it. It's a little scary at first. It feels like it could hop away, but just make a little cradle for it and it'll stay right there. And then grip very loosely with your dominant hand. If I grip tighter, I get a drier sound. Let's listen to the wood, wood type. Cradled sound. Now I'll grip them. Let's play really soft. And a little louder. Grip for a more dampened technique. Cradle, loose grip, more resonance. In playing concert toms, really the thing that's most important to consider is your setup. There's no rule on how to set up concert toms. You might set them up with the high drum on the right or the high drum on the left. If you're using four concert toms, you could have them moving from right to left or left to right or stacked in front of one another like I have here. It's going to change based on the musical passage. So do a little research with concert toms. Look at the music and figure out the way that you can make the best sounds consistently. In this setup here, I'm going to start with some multi mallets. I'm going to show a difference between the sounds if I play dead center or just off center. In the center, much like the concert bass drum when we did that loud cannon shot, we get a drier sound. Moving slightly off center, a little bit more sustain. I can even play near the edge, which makes a slightly thinner sound, but it's easier to play piano passages. Next, I'll use some sticks so you can hear the difference in the tone. Rolls on concert tom really can be a personal choice. I've seen it done both ways with a buzz roll or the single stroke roll like we used on the bass drum. Remember, concert toms are lots of fun, but don't just walk up and play the same setup that the person before you used. Do your research, look at your music, and don't be lazy. Make a choice, determine your setup, and have a great time with concert toms.